All right, so now it's time to use Maya. So we're going to be using Autodesk Maya. Um, it's sort of the industry standard. There's a bunch of uh, different software, uh, 3D animation softwares out there. Um, so there's also Autodesk um, 3D Studio Max. Um, there's obviously um, Blender. A lot of you guys use Blender. Um, there's uh, Modo. Uh, but Maya is probably, as far as professional in the industry, it's probably the main um one okay now there's a lot of supporting software you generally use as well but maya is usually the the core base one uh that people will utilize okay so one thing i want to show you though if you are doing this at home or you're going to need to get it at home as well uh is that unlike um adobe who suck and charge you uh you can actually get maya for free uh as a student um, you just need to make a student account and then you can download it and use it. Now, it will, when you save it, uh, it'll be a full version, everything else. But when you save it, every time you open up the file, it'll say this was made with a student version. That's the only thing. Other than that, everything works exactly the same as if you had a professional uh, version of it. So that's pretty cool. But to show you how to, to get it in case you need to, um, you just go to like Google and type in like Autodesk Maya like so. All right, and here we go. I was just going to grab this one. So it says Autodesk Maya and whatever. As long as you get to the Autodesk site. If you go to menu over here on the right, come on, baby, you can do it. There we go. And you'll see um, uh, students and educators. Don't click free trials. A lot of you guys screwing that up. Students and educators. Badoop. And then you go download free software. Oh, boy. And click on that. And then, oh, this is the one I need. Click on Maya. It's good if you uh, make an internal dialogue with yourself as well. Um, and then if you have an account, which you probably don't, you would hit sign in and then you would choose these things. And then it will, um, uh, if you don't have an account, you just create an account. Now you need to have a student email address, I believe. Um, and you just create the account, blah, 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 blah. You just go through the thing. They don't spam you with a t bunch of stuff. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, it's not bad. Um, they might give you something every like, I don't know year you know what i mean like they're gonna give you one initially when you first do this but then after that they don't they don't spam you but anyways once you're done with that um it'll go through here you'll choose your version um now in your operating system so obviously if you're on a mac choose mac if you're on a pc uh choose pc i don't know if they have linux on this one anymore like or if you have to like get a special version it used to be on linux too but um so in uh, at wilmington currently we are using 2018 so um Download 2018. I know that they just released 2020, um, but I don't believe they've upgraded to 2019 even yet. Uh, generally speaking, colleges, which I think is the right choice, they always are a version behind. The reason for that is that way if there's any, something, anything odd or weird or not functioning correctly, um, we're not dealing with it. You know what I mean? If, if you are always one year behind, then all the bugs have been figured out. So um i imagine they might be on 2019 they weren't as of the fall of this semester but i imagine that they probably are still 2018 um there's honestly not much difference so it's not worth that anyway so just download the 2019 version uh and then it, it, it'll it'll be a little file and it's basically gonna be a download manager and so it downloads and installs at the same time this one program so just follow along and you just need maya okay so uh once you have maya you can open it up so you just go, you know, start Maya or whatever. Uh, if you're on the the Mac at uh, Wilmington, uh, it might be down here. It looks like this, but I think it'll be a circle because it's a Mac. Uh, if, you, if you don't see it down here, just go up on the top and there's that little um, magnifying glass. If you click on that, uh, you can search for stuff just like I can click on here and search for stuff. Um, and uh, or if you have nothing selected and you're on the desktop, hit spacebar. I think that also brings up the search. But anyways, just type in like Maya and just choose the 2018 version. OK, um, unless they have 2019, if they have 2019, we'll start using 2019. But for now, I'm just going to use 2018 because that's what they had when I last checked. All righty. So you'll open up Maya uh, and this is what you're going to see. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of describe uh, the different areas here, which everybody loves because it's super boring. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right. So. On the very top here, you have sort of the main menu items, right? So, um, and these are all the things you typically expect. So file has all of your save and import, export, that sort of stuff, like you would expect, right? 
it's nothing um edit you know copy and paste and duplicate again kind of what you'd expect create will allow you to create um the primitive so um these are nerbs we're not going to be using those but polygon primitive so your objects there's lights there's cameras it creates things big surprise um select i don't really use uh yeah we're not going to think use any of this uh if we do any of this we're just going to use the hotkeys of what these are um modify uh does what kind of you would expect it to um but again the only one i'm really going to use here is it's probably the freeze transforms i don't think we're going to bother with um like in the when we do some of the other classes we'll get into these a little bit more but for intro we don't really need any of these things um display uh is basically if you lose some elements in here uh or anything like that you can use that but i don't really uh bother with any of this either so um windows so this is the main maya window uh, but there's a lot of i don't want to call them modules but there's a lot of like separate little spaces so for instance if i have um uh, if i have the sphere and i want to put a different material on it i could go to windows um rendering editors hypershade and then you'll see we have this come on okay we have this thing and this has all the materials and stuff so i can make like a blend and you know and change the things about it and change the color and all that right um so there's a lot of like windows such as that so like there's the graph editor we're going to use for animation eventually and that will show you your keys so there's a lot of these like pop-up windows that you will be using inside the windows here uh, but that's more or less what it is it's also useful for this so you know like if you're in um any of the adobe software i wish this one had it i don't think it does but you know there's a thing that says like workspace you can go reset workspace and so if for some reason like you i accidentally like ripped off this timeline right and then i got rid of him like ah my timeline's gone fi right uh you could just go reset workspace i don't think this has it i don't know if they added it but they haven't let me see workspaces oh they do have it does that work how oh, sweet okay never mind use that um they didn't have that before uh because now they have the different workspaces which you can switch up here too but i don't use any of those um but also if you go to ui elements so like the time slider i can turn it off there windows ui elements so user interface elements obviously so um yeah so that has that stuff now after windows what you're going to see is it has these things here now notice this has mesh uh, edit mesh mesh tools blah 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 right um these change depending on the menu set so watch if i switch to rigging you'll see that after windows now it says skeleton skin deform okay so each one of these have different the, the beginning ones up to Windows will be the same, but the rest of them will change. Generally speaking, keep it on modeling. We'll, we will use rigging um, and we will use rendering later, but we're like 90% of the time just going to keep on modeling. Okay, so just leave that on modeling and you'll be fine. Um, okay. Then underneath that, we have, you know, open new scene, open, uh, save, uh, undo, redo. Um, uh, these deal with like snapping and stuff. Um, this is like object and component select. It does none of this is really going to be super useful. Over here will be kind of useful because this is how we'll render a frame. So if I click on this, you'll see that ah, stupid Arnold render. Stop! Come on, I regret so much. Please, I need a new computer. There it goes. Uh, but if I render Maya software, you'll see. Ooh, it rendered a frame. So this is just like one frame it renders, right? So um good all right uh so we'll be using that this is also the same thing as doing the hypershade so if i click on the little blue ball here you'll see that the hypershade window will pop up which is kind of useful but it's kind of weird that they put it over there um next underneath that is what we call the shelf and now in the shelf it's kind of like the menu sets it has these different little tabs okay keep it on body modeling we won't use any of the other ones um, but basically what it allows you to do is that like if i want to create a sphere right i could go polygon sphere and it'll create a sphere i can also just click on it okay <clears throat> excuse me so basically all they are are short uh like shortcut hotkeys okay but all of these can be found up in here because they're all gonna make me lose my mind all right but they can all be found up there uh these are just like quicker ones all right now the nice thing about this too is that you can actually make um you can make a new shelf and have all your own custom tools and stuff in there. You can also take things like I might want something that's not in here. So I could go to like mesh tools and I think insert edge loop isn't in there. So I could um, uh, control shift middle mouse button click and boom. Now it's up here. And you see there it is. Yay. 
and I don't know if I right click and delete it. There we go. And I can delete it. So you can add or remove um, the icons as well. So you can make your own custom shelf pieces. And this is really useful because let's say you're an animator and you want to be able to only select arms or legs or make a key. You can have like all these different things. But if you're a modeler, you can have a bunch of modeling ones, like all the things that you use the most. You can just click on these buttons up here. It's a lot quicker and easier. You're going to find that in Maya. There's a million ways to basically do everything. So like I could create a sphere up here. I could create a sphere here. I could hold space bar, open up the hot box and go create and do it here. Um, there's a bunch of ways. Okay. So just anyway, but yeah, this is actually super useful. We'll be using this a lot now over here. This is the, I think they call it the toolbar. Um, uh, so this allows you to like this is regular select. So let me just make it sphere. Okay, so regular select. This is like lasso, which um, you wonder how many times I've used it now twice. I don't use that at all. It's not really useful. Um, um, so uh, let's go back to mode. Um, and then paint select, and then uh, uh, transform. Or I think it's called move actually in here. Tra uh, move, rotate, scale, um, and then whatever the last tool was that you were using. That's like a specific tool. Will pop up down here. And these will, these are different um, layouts. Okay. Now, here's what you need to know about this. I'm going to tear it off and get rid of it. You need to be using hotkeys. It's not like uh, Adobe where you can, you know, hit E uh, for eraser or whatever, and you can hit B for brush um, for those hotkeys. But it's just as quick to actually click over here. You're going to have to just get used to using the hotkeys because we have to use a lot of them. In order to make everything work it's not crazy it's not as bad as i would say blender is i think blender is a little bit worse um it's also one of its strengths but it's um but just get used to using hockey so i would just rip that off and get rid of it it's if you're going over here and clicking every time you're gonna get carpal tunnel and ain't nobody got time for that all right so anyway that was that now um inside of here this is called the viewport okay so the viewport is basically the 3d space and um, these things that more or less deal with what I'm looking at here. Okay, so uh, so for instance, if you look right here, see this little box that makes wireframe, flat shaded, um, texture and flat shaded, wireframe on shaded, texturing, light. You can see when I have lighting on, let's turn these ones off. Um, that's just black because there's no lights in there. Shadows, there's again, there's no shadows. Uh, blur, uh, anti, or sorry, ambient occlusion, blur, um, and then uh, anti-aliasing. Okay. Uh, this is like x-ray, but basically it's all these things that deal with that, right? Uh, I can do other things where I go show and I don't want to show any polygons. So if I have other things in the scene, they'll show up, but now polygons are not visible. Okay. Uh, but these basically, this all deals with this viewport. Now let me show you something. Let's tap space bar. And now you'll see I have four panels. Okay. So I have these three orthographic views, which just means that there's no vanishing point. There's no um, perspective. Uh, and then I have perspective. So notice that like if you took this line and this line, they come to a single point, right? So it has perspective. These are infinitely flat. It does not matter uh, how I do it. So watch if I take like, let's say I make a cube and I'm just make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. If I rotate this, see how it's infinitely, see how it's straight? Technically it should be, you know, it should have a, it should come down like this. So there's no perspective. That's what makes this orthographic, right? So if I tap space bar, you'll notice that this popped up but um, each one of these have their own thing. So I can have a different setting for this one that I have that I have for this one. So doing it in one doesn't affect the other. Now, if I want to look in, like, say, you can see here it says top view, front view, side view. If I want to see the top view, all I got to do is you don't have to click in here. You just hover your mouse over in this area and just tap space bar. And then you're in there. I could tap space bar to go back into four panels and go over here. Tap space bar, tap space bar, tap space bar. OK, so these are good and useful. Um, uh, you're going to need them at some point, but for right now, it's not too big of a deal. Um, so, yeah. Now, if for some reason you're you're not getting four panels or it's it's only showing one no matter how many times you tap space bar, it just means that the layout isn't there. So, um, if you remember before, I said to delete this thing, the toolbox. I'm just going to take... I just want to move you over. How can I grab you? Come here. This is dumb. Well, anyway... Uh, Anyway, so if I click on this, this will do my four panels, and then I can, that's what these are for. So if I watch, if I go to this one, now when I tap space bar, nothing happens because that's the layout. And they have like a, a split screen on two, right? So I can go between this one and this one. And there's a lot you can do with this. Um, now, so if you need to do that, you could just do that. Uh, another way of doing that is if you go to panels, and then you go to layouts, you can see there's three, four panes. 
You just turn that on, it'll make four panes. Um, it's another way of doing it, all right? Okay. Oh, and if for some reason, like, this panel becomes another perspective, you're like, ah, all you got to do is go panels, and the one I need, so I got I got side over here, and I got top over here, so I would just go orthographic, and I need um, front. Okay, so for some reason that gets messed up, you can do that too. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to try and stick in just perspective. Uh, but when you are working perspective, make sure you're constantly rotating around, which I have not covered yet, but I'll cover it in a moment. Okay. So that's the viewport. That's the 3D space that you're working in. All right. Um, you can also see uh, your orientation by this little thing down here. So just keep an eye on that. So you see there's Z, X, and Y. So Z is depth. That means, and notice that the Z is pointing this way. That means this is positive Z and this is negative Z. All right. And then this, um, if I pull it up, see how the Y is up, that would be positive Y and this would be negative Y. So if I delete this. This is origin. This is zero, zero, zero. Uh, right in all directions um and just so you get an idea if i were to take this and i move it forward on positive z you're going to see that my z translate is positive but if i go backwards it's negative okay because it's literally just showing me its position uh like math all right so that's the viewport i think that's pretty good all right now, um, on the bottom here, I'm going to cover this last because it changes a little bit. But on the bottom here is the timeline. We're not going to have to do anything with this initially. We'll play around with this later on when we get into animation stuff. But basically, uh, it's, you know, if I hit play over here, it plays it and all that, right? It's not, it's pretty straightforward. If you've used other animation softwares at all, it's the same as, as those, okay? Um, nothing's, uh, nothing's different there. All right, now, um, over here, uh, we have uh, these panels here, okay? So, um, do me a favor, make sure you have poly modeling, make a, a sphere, okay, and then click to select the sphere. Don't worry if you're like this one, this one, or this one, whatever you're, I don't care what the manipulator is. Now, if you look at here, it says channel box, uh, layer editor, modeling toolkit, attribute editor. Now, you might not have those three tabs. They're also up here. So, if I want channel box, I click on this guy. If I want, I don't want that one anyway. If I want the attribute editor, it's here. This is the uh, tool settings, which I'm just going to snap back over there. Get in there. Is that in there? Darn it. That's not what I wanted. I want you to be part of... There it is. Okay. Um, but basically, that is these. Don't worry about these other two for right now. Leave those two alone. They're just, they're just other panels okay but these are the panels that are in there okay so we have the uh, the first one here that's the channel box this is channel box this is tool settings okay and attribute editor now the channel box what that does is it gives you the most basic information you can see here i have the name of the object i have selected and i have its translates rotate scales and visibility they are what you think they are so translate i can actually just type it in here i can type in five and that's going to say okay uh, it's positive five on translate Z. If I want to move it up five, right? Or if I want to move it down the other way on X, I could do minus 10. I can move around that way. It's the same as moving around here and you can see the numbers changing, but it gives you the most basic, um, uh, information. Okay. And then there's other stuff down here. Now there's also this layers thing. Um, basically what this allows you to do, it's, it's not the same as layers in Photoshop. But what it would allow you to do is I can have like this thing um, and I could put one of them like let's say on a layer and I could turn that layer off. It's still there, um, but I can turn it on and off. Okay, like one of each one of these is on a layer. So that's that's the purpose of um, these things. Okay, so it's visibility layers. There's other layers too, but you know, they got rid of re rendering layers. There's also animation layers, but for the most part, we'll just deal with the display layers. Okay. Um, but most of the time, just stay uh, have the channel box on because it's useful to have over there. But don't. Um, okay. So, anyways, that's that's it gives you the basic information. Now, if we go over to, um, I'm gonna skip the uh, the attribute editor. <coughs> what this does is it gives you more information. So, if I go to like let's say the P sphere here, this is the transform information. You see, it's got translate, rotate, scale, but it also gives me like rotate order, the rotation axis, axis, the um, pivots you know where it is in local space all this other stuff right it's just more information um and then if we go to the shape note that's the actual geometry that's attached to it so it gives me like mesh data and all sorts of you can see it gets real 
it gets a lot, right? This is the thing that made the sphere initially. So, like, if I go, let's say, 16 by 16, right? So now you can see it changed a little bit. Uh, actually, let's do 8 by 8, okay? Um, all right, but uh, so this gives you, um, here's the initial shading group. So that's the shaders attached to it. And this is the material that's attached to the shader. So I could change the color here. It gives you more information um, dealing with the, um, the object. Uh, but honestly, especially in the beginning, it gives you more than you kind of need. So just, I wouldn't even bother looking at that. Just keep it on this guy for now, all right? The other one here is the um, tool settings. Whatever tool you have on. So right now I have the move tool. It's going to give me settings for that move tool. Okay, but if I said, let's say I have this multi-cut tool, it's going to give me settings for the multi-cut tool. And if I have quad draw, quad draw tool, whatever tool or whatever I have on, it's going to give me the settings of that tool that I'm currently using. And that's basically the idea of it. All right, so that's that's the tool settings. Um, good, so that was a really long, uh, boring thing. Okay, so <coughs> let's do um, this. Now that we know all of the pieces here, let's go ahead and just, I don't know, we'll make like a snowman, all right? So, to make a snowman, do you want to build a snowman? No, you don't want to hear that. Okay, so, um, to do that, what we're going to do is we can do it a couple different ways. Now, you'll notice that when I click on the sphere, don't uh, if you have one already, you do actually, just go ahead and while it's selected, just click on hit delete to get rid of it. If I click on the sphere, don't do it, I'm showing you, it's going to automatically make it at this setting. I don't really like that setting. Um, Meaning that like it's got a certain number of edges and it looks a certain way. So what I'm going to do instead, if I go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Sphere, it's again going to make it the same way. But if I go to Create, Polygon Primitive Sphere, Option Box, it's going to give me the settings that I put in there. So what I want you to do is just go ahead and do 8 by 8. Okay, so um, 8 axis divisions, 8 um, height divisions, and the rest of the settings should be fine. And then go ahead and hit create, and it's going to make them at that. Now, let me show you something. If I delete this guy, and now if I click on it, so whatever the settings were the last time that you made it, it'll be that for perpetuity, okay? So um, it's still going to be 8 by 8. So uh, once we set these up, you won't have to do it again, all right? Okay, so we made a, a sphere. Um, now what I want to do is just show you how to rotate around, okay? So to rotate, uh, move, and zoom in and out, you hold the Alt or Option key if you're on a, on a Mac, and Alt and left mouse button, your normal click mouse button, that rotates. Okay? Ooh. Okay? Alt, middle mouse button. Um, so uh, if you're on uh, the Mac, it's that little stupid pimple ball thing. Uh, you just you push in the wheel of your mouse. That's middle mouse button click. Okay? Uh, click and drag. That is, uh, you know, that moves the camera. Okay? Ooh. And if you want to zoom in, you can use the scroll bar thing, but you'll notice that it's kind of increment. And again, because Macs kind of blow, they, they their mice are just horrendous. They, those stupid ball things don't work well. Um, uh, you want to do alt right mouse button. See the fidelity is a lot better. Okay. See, I'm not even on a Mac, and I have a nice mouse, but it still is clicky, and I don't really like that. So alt right mouse button. That is zoom in and out. Okay. So middle, left. Now what I want you to do is just kind of zoom around and go, ooh, yeah, it's great. You're moving around. Look at that. Now the nice thing is with this system, this alt, left, middle, right, um, it's pretty standard at this point. Like if you go into Unity, this is the default setting. If you go into Mudbox, this is the default setting. Um, most um, programs have pretty much gone to this. Um, it's one of the reasons why I don't like Blenders because Blender, I think Blender does use this now, but... A lot of their stuff is non-standard. You're going to find that most of the time with Maya stuff, it's pretty standard. So if you go to another program, it's similar, and you're not as, like, lost. Um, so, yeah, just move around. Now, if you do this, and you go, whoa, no, I'm out in outer space. I'm terrible. Okay? If this happens, you're like, I can't find it. What you can do is there's two buttons. If you hit A, like Apple, that frames all. Okay? So imagine I have two of these guys. Okay? Let's put this one over here. Okay? Um, if I hit A, it's going to frame between them. Notice that they're basically both in the middle. It's not on this one. It's between them. So that's A. So if you get really lost, you can hit A and you don't have anything selected. However, if I have this selected and they go over there and I hit F, think like focus, it will focus on that object. 
notice that this one is not in the place. Now, if I let's say, and this is actually useful, you're going to want to use this even if you don't get lost, because let's say now I want to go work on this guy. Watch what happens when I try to rotate around it. It's not rotating around it. The reason why is you're not actually rotating the camera. You're rotating a pivot around the object. If I rotated just the camera, what I would end up doing is something like this. So uh, right now I have the camera selected. See how it says persp? I just I click this to select the camera. This is what it would look like if I rotated the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. It would be like this. This isn't really all that helpful, right? What's more helpful is if you know it pivots around an object like that. Okay. So um, let's say I go over here and now I want to work on this guy. You can see, ah, oh, it's really hard. So what you want to do is you select it and then hit F to focus. And now you'll notice my manipulator here. See how that's the center? So that's really useful um, to, uh, you know, just stay not lost and what have you. All right. Uh, so it, whenever you're working on things, you can just click on it and be like, okay, I want to go over here. And then this works. We didn't do We're not going to do this quite yet, but this even works at component level. So let's say I'm working on this guy. I have it framed, but now I work on the top of it for some reason. When I go to rotate, it's not too bad, but it could be a little bit better. If I go and I select this and I hit F on that specifically, now uh, you can see I'm pivoting on that part of it. Okay, so later on we learn about components. Um, you know that it, it's useful for that as well. So just get used to hitting F. Get used to just moving and rotating. Constantly move and rotate around the object to get an idea of what it looks like. Because your object's going to be in 3D. Um, that's how it's going to be viewed. It's it, so you you want to make sure you're constantly viewing. I've seen some people where they build a whole scene. And it's like one of those weird art things where it looks good and then you turn to the side and suddenly it's this like big jumble of just randomness, um, which is kind of neat. But you, you got to make sure you're moving around. All right. Um, <clears throat> OK, so um, that being said, uh, let me do this real quick, too. I'm going to change that color of that object. Boop. And let's go like, there we go. OK. All right. So now we've got uh, a ball. Right. So we're just going to make a snowman now. So um, we have three, four primary like tool things. OK, so um, we have Q, W, E and R. OK. And this, again, is another one of those things that's standard as long as you're not blender. Um, but so Q is select, which means there's no manipulator. If I am on Q, so you just tap Q, um, it'll select something. So let's say I have another one of these guys. OK, if I have Q, I can select each one. Now, you might be like, well, what's the point of that? I can just do it with one of the other ones. That's true. But what you'll notice is, um, let me get this guy closer. Sometimes, you know, you might have something like this. And let's say I want to grab the other one. The manipulator is like in the way because it's just going to try to manipulate it when I want to select it. So Q is useful because there's no manipulator to get in the way. That's the idea of it anyway. Okay. So that's Q. W is the move uh the translate it's move tool but that's what it does okay so i'm upside down all right so um so that's w so w does that now when you go to move it do we want to go like let's say i want to move this over here do i just grab it by the center and go womp i can hear you saying no because obviously i wouldn't ask that um what you'll notice is it did not just move it to the side it also moved it back so when you grab something by the center and move it around you're actually moving it in all three axes. And it's very difficult to know if you're moving it depth wise or what direction you're moving. So what you want to do is whenever you're moving something, you grab it by these handles. So if I want to move it over, I would grab this red one and then maybe grab the green one. Right. So the X and the Y. All right. Or if I want to move it forward, you know, and over, but grab the handles. Don't grab by the center because you're it's it's not uh, good positioning. Now, there's also these squares you can use. So you'll notice if I grab this square, it's going to move it basically not in the X. It'll allow me to move it in two axes alone. It doesn't go back and forward. It just goes left and right and up and down. And that's also this one. Okay, so you can use those two if you want. Generally, I would get more in the habit of using these things. You're a little bit better off. Um, but when you move objects, always grab by the handles. Okay. Now, E, so there's E and R. Now, you would think R would be rotate because that would be the smart thing to do, but actually E is rotate. Um, now, I mentioned this earlier. You see how big the manipulator is? If the manipulator is too big, you can use the plus and minus keys. That just makes the manipulator bigger or smaller. All right? Now, um, so I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. 
Uh, there are advantages to making it bigger because watch, if I have it bigger, when I go to move it, see I can make these little fine movements, okay? Now, if it's smaller, so I make it really small, it's a lot harder. See how like it's a lot harder. So um, there's an advantage of actually making the manipulator bigger, smaller beyond just it being in the way and not in the way. So um, now it's the same thing as I was saying with the move. Do not grab it by the center. See, I can move in all axes, but I have no idea what direction that thing's getting rotated. It's all over the place. So what you want to do is use the blue, red, and green. Okay. So uh, Y axis, and you can if you don't know axis is which, you can see here it's color coded. So um, blue is Z, you know, X is red, um, so on and so forth. Do not grab it by this one. See how there's a cyan blue one? That one's stupid. Basically what it is, it's, it's, it's perpendicular to the camera, which means when I rotate it, it's going to rotate it from the camera's point of view uh, around. Okay? That's not helpful. So don't use that one. Just these inside ones. All right? Voila. There you go. So that's how you use the rotate tool. Last one is R, which is scale. Makes sense? No, not really. Okay. This actually is the opposite. When you go to scale stuff, don't go like, uh, 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 because you have no idea. I did not make that even. If you look over here, you can see they're a little bit off. Instead, whenever you go to scale, unless you're specifically trying to only scale one axis, which is fine. You're going to want to do that at times. But most of the time, scale from the center because that will proportionally do all dimensions. Okay. All right, so uh, good. So we have um, this uh, thing here. Uh, now I need to make another one. So we can do it two ways. Um, I can actually, let's just go ahead and do it this way. So um, actually, I want you to select it, hit R for scale, and then click the middle and just make it a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to rotate this way, hit W for the move tool. I'm going to pull it up so it's sitting on this plane. If your plane's not here, the grid, it's just this waffle up here. Okay, so I'm going to pull it up so it's sitting like that. Now what I'm going to do is I need another one. So I'm just going to make another sphere. There it is. I'm going to take this guy, and I'm, just, I'm on the move tool. I'm just going to pull it directly straight up and slap it on like that. This is a sexy snowman. Okay, now I could just do that again, but instead, let's just duplicate it. So to duplicate, it's Control-D or Command-D. If I ever say Command or Control, it's the opposite for PC and Mac. Um, some things are not, but most of them are. So I'm just going to take that. Uh, I still have the move tool. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to R for scale. Scale it down. W. Put it down. Woohoo. All right, good. We have an ugly snowman. Now what I need is maybe a nose. A nose would be a what? That's right, a cone. My personal not favorite shape. We don't use it for anything. Now, if again, if I click on it here, it's going to be a lot of edges. Generally speaking, we want to try and keep it as low as possible, the number of polys. That will still represent the shape. Um, I know it doesn't look great right now, but... Uh, if I want to, it's very easy to add geometry. I cannot remove geometry. You can, but it doesn't watch. It's generally, oh, it did okay job. But it, it just generally doesn't work that well. So try to keep yourself as low poly as possible. So what I'm going to do is, again, I don't really like this. I'm going to go to Create Polygon Primitives. And we're going to go to Cone. Hit the Option box. And we're going to do Axis Division 8. Now you're going to notice I always do things in 4, 8, 16, 32. We do these square, uh, square root, not square root squared um numbers okay um you'll kind of see later why it's because they're easier to um attach and go into that way all right so we'll create it there it is right there now for some reason this thing's dumb or something you're like i can't see it uh what you can do is this right now we are in flat shaded mode but if you remember i can click on this up here this is wireframe and then i can see it so i could if i don't have it selected i could click on it right there okay uh, and I can go back to flat shaded or it's four, five is flat shaded, six uh, is textured, which doesn't look any different because there's no there's no images applied to it. Seven is lighting. Uh, I don't know what eight does. I don't think he's doing anything. All right. So um, go back to five. Anyway, so I'm going to take it. Now, I need this to be up on his nose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit W for the move tool. I'm going to pull it up like this. Now he's got a dunce cap. And then I'm going to rotate to the side. So I'm holding alt, middle, left, and right mouse button. Okay, I'm going to take it. Now, I need to, if you look, see how Z is this side? All right, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull it forward. And then I need to rotate it. So I'm going to hit E to rotate, and I want to rotate it uh, this way. Now, I, what I would suggest doing is this. Rotate like this. Now, that's not perfectly straight, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is after I rotate, I'm going to look over here on my channel box and I'm like, ah, 87. I'm just going to click on that and type in 90. Now it's perfectly 90 degrees. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, hit R. I'm going to scale it in general down small by grabbing the middle one. And this time, instead of moving each one of these, I'm going to grab the red one, pull it down here. Now, if you look, you'll see, oh, that doesn't look real good because it's kind of fat. So I'm going to hit R again, and I'm going to scale it just on this one and pull it like that. Okay. Yay. That looks like a thing. Now he's got a nose. Uh, I'm not going to do the eyes right now because we'll just do... You know, all right, let's we'll do the eyes. We're just gonna do them as cubes to make things easy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the cube because usually cubes they don't like make them high poly because there's no reason to. So I made a cube, so I click on the cube thing. I'm gonna pull it forward so I can see it. Hit W if you're not already in the move tool. Pull it up, I'm just grabbing these handles like this. I'm gonna push it back. I'm gonna hit R for scale, scale it in the middle. W. Now I'm gonna do. Let's just use orthographic view. I'm gonna hit space bar. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front view, uh, hit space bar. I'm just hovering over it and tapping space bar. All right. And to zoom in and stuff in these, it's just alt, left, and middle mouse button. You'll notice when I go to rotate, it's going to give me, I think, an error, doesn't it? No. Oh, it does. Right there. Uh, I can't rotate because this is an orthographic view. But I can do, I can navigate the same way as everything else. So I'm just going to kind of get closer. If I want to get even closer, real quick, I'll just hit F, the frame. So I'm going to take it. And then here... It's actually okay to grab it in the center because we're in orthographic view, so it doesn't move um, forward or backwards, okay? Then I'll hit R for scale, let's get a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to kind of move it over roughly where I want it. Okay, that looks okay. I'm going to tap space bar. I'm going to go over here, tap space bar to the side view. And again, I'm going to move in. I'm just going to push it straight back until it goes into the head here. And that looks okay. Tap space bar, tap space bar. Yay. I'm going to take this one, control D for duplicate, and I'm just going to push it to the other side. Now, if I wanted to be exact, I could click on this one and look. Okay, so I just moved it in my X axis, right? See how it's red? And that was the one I used. So what I do is I would look over here and be like, okay, translate X. I have 0 0.208. I'm just going to put 0 0.2 just to make it easier, right? So if it's 0.2, if I want this to be exactly the same, I got to put minus 0.2 okay because obviously it's going to be you gotta remember this is origin right so this is positive 0.2 and if i want it to be over here it'd be minus 0.2 and that way i make sure it's perfect all right so if that matters to you you can do that all right now let's give them a top hat so to do a top hat obviously it's going to be uh, a cylinder again if i click on it the default settings are probably going to be high poly and i don't want so high poly so i'm going to go to create polygon primitives cylinder option box and we're just going to go ahead and let's do eight for axis divisions and hit create yay all right so i'm going to take that i'm going to just go whoop okay now he looks like a, a silly russian uh snowman all right um move it down a little bit r for scale i'm going to scale it down w for down now he looks like he's wearing, like, a, was that a fez or something? I forget what that hat's called. You know, that silly hat. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Control d for duplicate. Then what I'm going to do is hit R for scale. I'm going to scale it wider first. Then I'm going to, uh, you know, the main one here. And then I'm going to scale it thinner. And then I'll move it down like this. And then maybe scale it wide again. Okay. And now... We have a terrible looking snowman. He's pretty terrible, right? I'm pretty proud of his terribleness. You should be too. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah. All right. So I think you should probably have enough. So everything we did, we just moved in component level. So what I would suggest doing right now is just move around, maybe try to add some more things to it. Um, but I think that's probably good enough as far as this is concerned. Um, so you can save this or not. That's fine. Um, uh, okay, so the next thing I want you to do after you keep playing around with this is actually start working on what we're going to be working on in class. So that is going to be here. Let's get that. Okay, so your first assignment is going to be um, to create the character model. Okay, it's not going to be due next week, but you should be working on it. All right, 
by next week, you're going to notice that every week, even though it's always the same model, I'll say you should complete. This is what you should have done at least by next class. By next class, you should have the character image planes done. Okay. Um, so what that means is we haven't done it in here, but you're actually going to bring in image planes um, and you will attach them to the side and front camera and you'll use those as a guide to model. Okay. Uh, so that should be done by next class. Uh, what, what I want you to do now, now that you're done with the snowman, is go down here and I want you to follow these videos. Okay. Now, as far as the image planes are concerned, uh, I draw it right inside of the computer. You don't have to do that. If you want to, um, sorry, I have a puppy. I foster dogs. So if you hear him whimpering or whatever, that's, that's why. It's because I'm a terrible person. Um, anyway, quiet. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, I draw inside of it, but if you want to draw on a piece of paper and take a picture of it and bring it into Photoshop and just clean it up or scan it, if you have a scanner or something like that, that's fine. But basically just follow these videos and this will give you a basic blocked version of the character and try to have that done by next class. Just do these two videos more or less for homework. Okay. And if you run into any problems or anything like that, just email me and I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. All right. Um, so good luck. Sorry I wasn't there this week. I will be there the rest of the weeks. Um, other than that, you're good to go.